All right, so moving right along, up next we have for you Dr. Kirsten Wickert, and she is going to be presenting to us um, on native fungal biocontrol of the invasive tree of heaven. So Kirsten is the spotted lanternfly coordinator and plant pathologist for the state of West Virginia. She has extensive experience with the topic she will be presenting today as she has worked on Tree of Heaven biocontrol during both her undergraduate degree at Penn State and her doctoral degree at West Virginia University. She is a passionate naturalist and educator who loves identifying mushrooms, insects, and flowers throughout Appalachia in her spare time. So let's uh, welcome Kirsten. Hi, so I think, uh... I'm sharing. I've done all I can. <laughs> I think Are we good? Gonna, you're going to want to put it into presenter mode so we can. All right, here we go. Cool. Okay. There she is. And here I am. Uh, so I worked with the native fungal biocontrol of the invasive tree of heaven for a very long time. It's uh, fed me for many years throughout undergrad labor and also graduate degree <laughs> and now with my real adult job. So I love talking about it and I'm excited to teach you all about Tree of Heaven. So first, like any good presentation, we have the information of what our organism of choice is, Tree of Heaven. Uh, goes by the scientific name, Ilanthus altisma. I do encounter people in the field that call it Ilanthus. It's also called stink tree, Chinese sumac, has a lot of names, um, but it's definitely not a tree from heaven, it's kind of a tree of hell. It's an exotic tree species that's native to East Asia, and it was introduced into Philadelphia in 1784 to act as a very successful street tree because it can grow almost anywhere and grow almost anywhere really well. It has male and female trees. They both have these beautiful long pinnate leaves, but the female trees will have these gorgeous pom-poms of pink and orange and yellow, like you see in that photo there. And it can quickly overtake disturbed land. Uh, there's mature trees throughout most of our uh, mid-Atlantic forests here that came after the gypsy moth disturbance and the compounding interest of the species is that it produces clonally and also those seeds. So you'll see an entire forest, just a monoculture of Tree of Heaven. It's currently throughout most of the United States. I think it might be too cold up there in Montana. I went looking for it and didn't find any, but I wouldn't be surprised if it pops up sometime. I have seen it in the deserts of California versus you know, the cities of Maine. So it has a wide area it occupies and unfortunately, it is being found out recently to be a bridge for many invasive species, particularly the hot topic of the spotted lanternfly. And now how we treat it, I, I would like to add goats to my regime, but now how we mostly treat it is using harmful chemical pesticides and uh, a lot of intensive forest management techniques. And recently, well, I guess I should stop saying recently because we've been working on this for many years. In 2002, a vascular wilt disease was found occurring on Tree of Heaven. And these are the symptoms that were found in central Pennsylvania occurring only on Tree of Heaven, such as bare canopies, leaf drop. There were some wilted foliage, as you can see in B and C. And underneath the bark in image D here were these large, colorful vascular stains. And so what is a vascular disease? What is happening with these symptoms? On the left, you can see there are two stems of Tree of Heaven. One is clean and white, and that is a healthy one. Then we have one on the right, which has that yellow staining, and you'll also notice there's two little clumps of foliage going out of it. That is because the vascular tissue is being damaged in two ways because of a pathogen. The tree is responding to the presence of the fungus growing into the pores by causing these vaginations of cells called tyloses. So if we look at the left part of this image, we'll see that the tube is completely open for water and nutrients to go throughout the foliage and the tree. But once we detect a disease, the tree starts to produce these tyloses, which cause closure of that piping 
and the tissue on the top of the plant dies. So this is happening because of the tree's own response, but also because of the fungus. And this is the native biocontrol candidate, Varicillium nonalfalfae. So it's an ascomycotin fungus, which is different than the beautiful mushrooms you see in the forest. And it has these spores here that are born on verticillate whorls. And the spores are physically what clog those tubes and also initiate that response of the tree to cause a wilt. It has these distinct melanized hyphae, which means it can overwinter for many years in the soil. And I have seen it personally with my own eyes at that same place it was found in 2002, that small seedlings that are emerging from seeds will die because the fungus is melanizing and surviving in the soil and can infect a new host. It's suspected that it was native in Pennsylvania, Virginia, and Ohio because it has been found three different isolates uh, at three different times. But recently I've had two professionals reach out to me from Maryland and New York who also think that they have the fungus. It more commonly appears in colder climates of the Eastern United States. And there is another species that occurs in warmer climates, but also can be found in Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Maryland, uh, Verticillium dahlia. And if anyone else is a plant pathologist on this talk, you will probably recognize Verticillium dahlia. It's a very common uh, pathogen of many different plants. It acts differently in that it has these Sclerotia, not melanized hyphae, which still overwinter, but has a very broad host range compared to what we've seen with Verticillium nonalfalfae on Tree of Heaven. You can even see there is a difference between these different species of Verticillium and that they kill Tree of Heaven in different ways or uh, different time lengths. So we've abbreviated Verticillium dahlia as VD, and then we have Verticillium nonalfalfae as VN. You can see the disease severity for VN here goes all the way up to four, which is 100% in only a few weeks. Whereas a tree of heaven can live for many, many years, almost 10 years with the weaker Verticillium dahlia infection. And there's been a lot of work on this pathogen. Again, it was found in 2002 and it's been studied uh, mostly by people at Penn State, but then it branched out when it was found in Ohio by um, the Forest Service and then also Virginia Tech plays a really large role and then my time in West Virginia helped out with a lot of this. But we've studied things like the efficacy and the spread, multiple host range studies, entomological classical biocontrol, host invasion and biology, and then also we've gotten really intense lately to answer some really cool questions with fungal phylogenetics and genomics. And the biggest question in this limited time frame that I have to present to you is what will the fungus do to other plants in the forest? And like I said, there's been many studies that have gone on this. Uh, there's Dr. Shaw who began his first expanded host range study where he looked at native trees in, that were co-occurring in tree of heaven forests. And then Dr. Kasson, whose this paper is here, expanded that to ornamental trees that people might have in their yard near Tree of Heaven Forest and things like that. And I don't want you to read the whole abstract just to focus on this. Uh, in the field, only devil's walking stick, striped maple, acquired infections through natural spread. And there, you'll see there's 17% and 3%, which is very low. Natural spread means that if I put the fungus in Tree of Heaven and I didn't touch the striped maple or the devil's walking stick, they would show symptoms of, get, of catching the disease. However, they recovered, the plants recovered, so they didn't completely die, they only had a few wilted leaves. So 17% of them showed symptoms and then they recovered. Now in the lab, there were 71 species of all types of plants that were inoculated and 23 of those species showed outward symptoms such as that wilt, dieback, and Dr. Kasson monitored them for six years, but they were able to uh, respond and be okay. And you'll have to remember that in the lab, you're like throwing like tons of snowballs and like of this level of infection at them, which isn't natural. So in short, without having that scientific jargon here, there are a few, but it doesn't cause the same amount of disease in severity or incidence and the plants commonly recover. And just to satiate more questions about that, because there's always the what if, which is great when you're trying to introduce a biological control agent, we wanted to look at genetics of the fungus. So 
So we've mentioned Verticillium non-alfalfae and Verticillium dahlia. There's another species, Verticillium alfalfae. And when I looked at the genetics of these fungi, I was able to see that they have different protein profiles. So to make this easy to understand, you and I are both humans, right? But there's like 0.5 of our genetic code that makes me female short brown hair, right? And so these are all the same genus, but they're different species. So that would be like, oh God, I don't know, tigers and panthers. And you can see that if we're thinking about it as like tigers and panthers, they differentiate as different species. So Verticillium non-alfalfae's genetic code is different than Verticillium dahlia and Verticillium alfalfae. And when you look at that even more similarly or more uh, pinpoint within Verticillium non-alfalfae, you can see that there are different hosts of so the different colored dots, these red ones versus the yellow ones. Those isolates, which means like individuals, you versus me, of Verticillium non-alfalfae have different genetic codes, which allow them to infect different hosts. So this little key down here for the image shows uh, humulus, lupulus, that's hops. Here we have a bunch of uh, solanaceous species like tomato and things like that, kiwi. They all group differently because the genetic code of that, that isolate of the species is different. And again, to use us as an easy example, we are all the same species, but you might be lactose intolerant and I'm not. The example here with the fungus is that the isolate of Verticillium non-alfalfae from Tree of Heaven is able to kill Tree of Heaven, but it's not able to kill tomatoes. So that was a very exciting discovery. Thank you. So there's been a lot of research that spread this fungus over the years. Like I said, it's mostly been at Penn State and I personally have put it at these locations and possibly more. It's been a really long time. And uh, there's some little dots on this image here showing the gray, white, and black, how extant Tree of Heaven is throughout the state of Pennsylvania. And research has also been done in Ohio and Virginia. So there are a lot of locations in the Mid-Atlantic area where this fungus is existing and killing Tree of Heaven. So what's left in the Verticillium biocontrol saga? After 19 years of research, is there enough evidence for regular old people to use this to control, like people who work for the state and landscaping agencies to control Tree of Heaven? There's a few more questions, such as identifying those exact proteins that make them able to infect different hosts. Um, we can also look for if there's tolerance. Someone mentioned the ash trees. Different uh, individuals of a tree can have different tolerance to diseases or insects. And also, it's really important that we think about how we're going to reclaim these forests where we wipe out Ilanthus, because what if they just get re like reclaimed by mile a minute and other things that are problematic, right? We want to be reactive versus preemptive or preemptive versus reactive in our management. And finally, there has been some good news after these 19 years, uh, which I've been involved for 10, which is really crazy, makes me feel old. But uh, recently, the Plant Protection Act 7721 uh, delegated some money for the registration of Verticillium non-alfalfa to be used as a biocontrol for Tree of Heaven. So the next step is formula formulation and then utilization is expected probably within the next couple of years. So people like you who work for the state can utilize the fungus. And that is it. So thank you very much. And we will do the questions in the Q&A. Thank you very much. No, thank you. That was uh, very informative. Uh, I myself hope that the state of Kentucky and KDF uh, will be able to use that in the future because we have a lot of tree of heaven to try to work with here. Um, so. Yeah, I will be happy to teach you how to do it and come to Kentucky and teach <laughs> awesome. you how to do it. <laughs> That'd be great. We, we need all the help we can get. I can't say it enough. All right, so the questions are going to go in the uh, Q&A down there.